Hi, this is Devin Davies here with Vessel, and we want to welcome you and thank you for joining us on this Vessel product training video. We hope to provide you with some better understanding of the Vessel brand and the Vessel products that we offer. Uh, today we're going to highlight the three main products that make up the Vessel portfolio, and that is the Vessel A1, A3, and A6. Now all three of these amplifiers have built-in uh, native streaming capability. And what that means is we've gone out and we've all three of these products, we have become certified partner products with Google, Apple, and Spotify. All right, before we dive into some of the technical features of the A1, A3, and A6, let's talk about what comes in the box. When unboxing an A1, you'll find the A1 itself, You'll find some quick start guides right here. Also comes with a power cord, a twist down Phoenix connector, and an IR blaster. When unboxing an A3, what you'll find in the box is the A3 itself. You'll find some quick start guides and some basic information on setup, uh, a power cord, an ethernet patch cable, three Phoenix connectors, and some rack ears in case you're mounting the A3 in a rack. When unboxing an A6, what you'll find is an A6 itself, some quick start guides, a power cord, ethernet patch cable, six Phoenix connectors, and two rack mount brackets when installing in a rack. So now we're gonna talk about the three products that make up the Vessel product portfolio and talk, highlight some of the key features in these products. Uh, these products all have the ability, they have built in Google Cast, AirPlay 2, and Spotify Connect to enable uh, native streaming from any mobile device to any zone or zones on your vessel system. The A1, A3, and A6 uh, all feature inputs and outputs on the back panels. Uh, the A3 and A6 are audio matrix amplifiers to enable uh, you to connect any external source, such as a DVD player, um, cable box, CD player, whatever it may be, uh, into the back of the amplifier, which can be played to any zone or zones uh, throughout the system. Uh, <clears throat> there's also, they also feature pre-outputs which enable you to uh, use these amplifiers as uh, a source and feed into either a 70 volt system, a landscape system, or uh, just an AVR. So now I'd like to focus on some of the inputs and outputs that are featured on the back panels of the A1, A3, and A6. On the A1, you'll notice on the back that there is a dedicated subwoofer output, a RCA analog input, RCA analog pre-output, as well as optical input and output, and digital co coax input and output as well. Um, there's also a switch on the back that controls the line output on the Vessel A1, whether you're using it with the amplifier or just as a pre-output uh, audio source, you can use it either way. The A3 and A6 feature uh, RCA inputs on the back as well. And these two amplifiers are audio matrixed, and so uh, that enables you to be able to uh, connect any external video source and play the audio to any zone or zones throughout the system. The A6 and A3 also have a dedicated pre-output uh, to be able to tie into a 70 volt system, uh, landscape system, or an AVR, similar to that of the, the uh, A1 as well. So now I want to talk about some of the best install environments uh, when using A1, A3, or A6. Uh, first, I want to talk about the A1. Uh, the A1 obviously can be installed just about anywhere in a project. Um, it's, it's very useful when installing behind a TV if you want to power a sound bar. Uh, it can be uh, installed with an AVR receiver. It can, there's just a lot of different ways to uh, utilize and install the A1. Um, a lot of times, um, the A1 is, is a great solution for expanding a system. So whether you have an A6 or A3 on a job already, uh, you can simply add a, uh, with the Wi-Fi capability that's built into the A1, you can simply add an A1 and put it anywhere in the project. Um, you also notice the thin profile of the A1. Um, <clears throat> and on the bottom here, there's some uh, mounting brackets, or mounting holes, to be able to install this or mount this behind the TV. Um, and then, as we mentioned before, there's the outputs that can go directly out of the A1 into a soundbar. Um, the A3 and A6 ideally are best installed when inside of a rack. Um, one thing you want to make sure of when you install these products in a rack is that there's 
adequate space in between amplifiers to allow for uh, venting and cooling of the products. Um, there's a lot of technology that's built into these amplifiers and you want to make sure to uh, provide adequate cooling inside of a rack. Um, we also have rack mount uh, ears that come in in the box and uh, can be used when installing these in a rack. Um, you're not restricted to just using a rack or installing these in a rack. You can put them on a bookshelf, you can put them in a cabinet. There's lots of different ways that you can utilize the A3 and A6 as well. But those are some of the best ways, uh, some of the best tips when installing uh, the, these amplifiers. When installing the Vessel A1 as a standalone unit, you want to make sure that it's installed into an environment that has good temperature control, good air regulation, and also is free from any dust or debris. Second, terminate your speaker wire by first stripping back an eighth of an inch of insulation. Next, insert the bare copper into the Phoenix connector, being sure to match the positive to positive and negative to negative. Use a small flathead screwdriver to tighten the screw down onto the speaker wire. Repeat these steps until all four conductors are terminated. Third, terminate your network cable if you're wanting to hardwire your A1 unit into your network. If you are planning on connecting via Wi-Fi, you can skip this step. Fourth, plug the A1 into power and continue the setup as necessary. When using the Vessel A1 as a source only unit, you want to make sure that it's installed into an environment that's temperature controlled and has good air circulation. You, want, you also want to make sure that there's no dust or debris that can affect the unit. Terminate your analog RCA, TOS, or digital coax cable into your A1. Then connect the same cable into whatever external amp you are planning on using. Second, terminate your network cable if you are wanting to hardwire your A1 unit into your network. If you are planning on connecting via Wi-Fi, you can skip this step. Third, plug the A1 into power and continue the setup as necessary. When using the Vessel A1 as a source to an external amplifier, as well as the internal amplifier that's built in, you want to make sure that the A1 is installed into an environment that has good air circulation and also is temp temperature regulated. You also want to make sure that it's free from any dust or debris that could get into the unit. Second, terminate your speaker wire by first stripping back an eighth of an inch of insulation. Next, insert the bare copper into the Phoenix connector, being sure to match the positive to positive and negative to negative. Use a small flathead screwdriver to tighten the screw down onto the speaker wire. Repeat these steps until all four conductors are terminated. Third, terminate your analog RCA TOS or digital coax cable into your A1. Then connect the same cable into whatever external amp you are planning on using. Fourth, terminate your network cable if you are wanting to hardwire the A1 unit into your network. If you are planning on connecting via Wi-Fi, you can skip this step. And finally, plug the A1 into power and continue the setup as necessary. When installing the Vessel A3 as a standalone unit, you want to make sure that it's installed into an environment that has good air circulation and also good temperature regulation uh, to make sure that the unit doesn't overheat. You also want to make sure that it's free from any dust or particles that could affect the unit. Second, terminate your speaker wire by first stripping back an eighth of an inch of insulation. Next, insert the bare copper into the Phoenix connector, being sure to match the positive to positive and negative to negative. Use a small flathead screwdriver to tighten the screw down onto the speaker wire. Repeat these steps until all 12 conductors are terminated. Third, terminate your network cable. Finally, plug the A3 into power and continue the setup as necessary. When installing the Vessel A3 and using the preamp outputs, as well as using the internal built-in amplifier, you first want to make sure that the Vessel A3 is installed into an environment that is temperature controlled and has good air circulation uh, to make sure that the unit doesn't overheat. You also want to make sure that it's free from any dust or particles that could affect the unit. Second, terminate your speaker wire by first stripping back an eighth of an inch of insulation. Next, insert the bare copper into the Phoenix connector, being sure to match the positive to positive and negative to negative. Use a small flathead screwdriver to tighten the screw down onto the speaker wire. Repeat these steps until all 12 conductors are terminated. Third, plug in an RCA cable into the bus output on the back of the A3 unit. Use the same cable and plug it into the external amplifier you're planning on using. Third, terminate your network cable. 
Finally, plug the A3 into power and continue the setup as necessary. Make sure to go into the Vessel mobile application and tie the bus output to the appropriate zone. When installing the Vessel A6 as a standalone unit, you want to make sure that it's installed into an environment that has good air circulation as well as temperature control uh, to make sure that the unit doesn't overheat. You also want to make sure that it's free from any dust or debris that could affect the unit. Second, terminate your speaker wire by first stripping back an eighth of an inch of insulation. Next, insert the bare copper into the Phoenix connector, being sure to match the positive to positive and negative to negative. Use a small flathead screwdriver to tighten the screw down onto the speaker wire. Repeat these steps until all 24 conductors are terminated. Third, terminate your network cable. And finally, plug the A6 into power and continue the setup as necessary. When installing the Vessel A6 and utilizing the preamp outputs, as well as the built-in amplifier, you want to make sure that the A6 is installed into an environment that has good air circulation and good temperature regulation to uh, make sure that the unit doesn't overheat. You also want to make sure that it's free from any dust or debris that could affect the unit. Second, terminate your speaker wire by first stripping back an eighth of an inch of insulation. Next, insert the bare copper into the Phoenix connector, being sure to match the positive to positive and negative to negative. Use a small flathead screwdriver to tighten the screw down onto the speaker wire. Repeat these steps until all 24 conductors are terminated. Third, plug in an RCA cable into the bus output on the back of the A6 unit. Use the same cable and plug it into the external amplifier you're planning on using. Fourth, terminate your network cable. And finally, plug the A6 into power and continue the setup as necessary. Make sure to go into the Vessel mobile application and tie the bus output to the appropriate zone. When working with the Vessel product set, we recommend using high quality, commonly known networking gear. There are two suggested network topologies we recommend when deploying Vessel within your project. The first would be a deployment you would typically see in a small home or small office setting, wherein you have a DSL or cable modem for your internet service provider. It would then be plugged into a Wi-Fi router combination appliance. From there, you can install the vessel unit or vessel units directly into the Wi-Fi router onboard switch. If your project is large enough and you require a network switch, you will need to install the network switch directly to the modem router combination unit. Then the vessel unit or units would be terminated into your network switch. The second would be a deployment you would typically see in a medium to large home or office setting, wherein you have gateway or modem device from the internet service provider. It would then be plugged into a router. Your router would then be plugged into your network switch, into the same network switch you'll want to terminate your vessel unit or units along with whatever access points you are planning on using for the project. If you have more than one access point on the project, you will need to assure you are using an access point controller to assure best possible performance for the vessel ecosystem. In even larger projects where multiple switches are being deployed or where you have a managed network wherein VLANs are being used, you'll want to see our advanced network training material. No matter the size of your network deployment, you will need to make sure your network has multicasting, UPnP, and Bonjour enabled. Also, as for general understanding, the A1 requires a single IP address, the A3 requires four IP addresses, and the A6 requires seven IP addresses. You will want to account for this as you are planning your IP address reservation strategy. The following will need to be completed to set up any vessel unit. In this case, we're going to use an A3 to demonstrate. You want to first make your network connection and make sure that you get the indicated flashing white lights, which indicates that it's ready to set up. So once you have those flashing white lights on the A3 the next, or the A6, uh, the next step is to go through the Google Home um, app and set up the zones one by one. So the way we do that, so again, I'll go to the Google Home app. Looks like this. Go to the Google Home app. You hit the plus button in the left-hand side here. And then you hit Setup Device. 
and it'll ask you, um, just, it'll give you a couple of options. You want to you select set up new devices. And then it's going to ask you to choose a home or create a new home. And when setting up a device for the first time, you want to create a new home. Hit next. And then you'll give your, your home a name. And you can, you can put in your address if you want, or you can skip that step. Uh, we'll go ahead and just skip that for this, for this step. And then it's going to go out and search for devices. So when setting up an A3, it'll show three devices. It'll discover three devices that we can set up, or three zones. And this indicates that there is a vessel unit found. You want to hit Next. And then it's, uh, going to, it's going to connect to the vessel amplifier, which takes a couple seconds. So again, it indicated that it found one. It asks you if you hear a sound. Uh, you can either listen for this, or you can just skip this step by hitting yes. And we can test the audio later. Um, and then there, Google will ask you a couple other things. You can skip through this. You can say, no thanks. I don't want to help improve the vessel amplifier. And then here is where you can name the zone. So you can either select from the, uh, the pre-made zones that they already have as options. Or you can go in there and create your own zone uh, and add a custom room name. Uh, for the sake of this video, we'll just select Attic. You hit Next. You'll be able to go back to the home screen of the Google Home app. And from here, <clears throat> you can see the names of your, your zones that you have set up. So uh, you, you'll see here I have different zones set up. And you'll see a speaker icon as well that indicates that the zone is actually set up and ready to stream to. Once you've set up all of your zones in the Google Home app, you can next set up a Google Cast group through the Google Home app as well. The way you do that is in the top, right, top left corner of the Google Home app, you hit the plus sign. From here, you can create a new speaker group. All of your zones will populate in this screen, and you can select which zones you want to add to the group. So I'll select two zones here. Then you hit Next. You can name the group here. Hit save. And once you've saved, saved the group, you can see, you can go back to the home page of the Google Home app to make sure that the group was created. And I can see here that it was. I got my group zone right there. And that's it. Once you've created your group and you've verified that the group is set up on the Google Home uh, home screen, then from there, you can go to any music app that has Google Cast. And for this uh, example, I'll go to Pandora. And from here, I'll select Google Cast in the bottom right. And then I can go through here and I can find my group. There it is right there. I select that. And immediately, you can start playing music to the group that you just created. All right, so when, when setting, setting up an A1, there's two options. You can either set it up through Google Home or another option that's actually quicker if you're just using AirPlay is uh, setting it up through AirPlay 2. Uh, the way you do that is you go to your network settings on your, on your phone, your Wi-Fi settings, and your phone will populate all the networks that your phone can see. And it will also show the A1 as an option to set up right here from the Wi-Fi settings on your phone. So you can see there, it says set up new AirPlay speaker. I tap that. And from here, <clears throat> I can actually name the zone. So I can go through here and uh, I'll delete this and custom name this zone to kitchen. Hit next. And then you give it a moment to set up. And uh, after this, you should be able to start streaming immediately from any music app. So this shows setup complete. So I hit done here. And now I can go back out to a music app. And let's go to Pandora in this case. I can go to my AirPlay settings. And there's my kitchen speaker right there. So now we want to talk about the Vessel app and some of the key features that are built into it. So 
Uh, let's go ahead and uh, do that. And, and just so you know, we have an iOS and Android app. So you download that app. When you first pull up the app for the first time, um, it'll ask you to register the app. Um, this is just basic information that you want to put in here. Uh, you, you could do later if you want, but this is going to keep showing up until you actually register the app. Um, so you want to make sure and go, th go through, enter your name, email address, um, and then that uh, registration will be complete. If, if you have a single vessel device or multiple devices set up, um, you'll, you'll be able to uh, log right into the app and go to the home screen of, of the app. If not, um, the vessel app will just say searching and you won't be able to get in. So you want to make sure that your amplifiers are connected to the network. Um, from here, I can go into the uh, top left menu here, and I have these different options. So I have home, system status, settings, or I can disconnect all zones. Uh, for this, let's just go into settings and show you some of the, some of the key features that are in settings. So from here, um, I can see that I have an A1 set up. So I'm going to go ahead and go into my A1. And uh, then I can see my device name, I can see the firmware version, I can see the serial, serial number. Um, also, one of the key things you want to keep in mind is right here is where you can name the input. So if you have an external uh, audio source that's plugged into the A1, I can go to my input names here. And from here, I can <clears throat> either name the optical input, the coax input, or the analog input. So. And then once you do that, you can actually access uh, those inputs from the home screen of the Vessel app. A couple other features you want to keep in mind. Um, so I'll go into my zone one here. And from here, you can see we have a, uh, a couple options for streaming. I can turn on or off the streaming. I have my Bluetooth on or off button right here. Um, I can see my, my zone name. So if right here, if I wanted to change the zone name and add a custom name, or if there's a change to the system, I can go in there and I can change the zone name right from here. So uh, there's also a mono output selection. And this is if you want to have both the left and right audio channels come out of all speakers. In that case, I would turn that on. So now uh, I have mono output uh, being uh, sent to, the, to that speaker. Uh, a couple other things, I have a max volume output. This is nice for be, being able to adjust uh, the maximum volume that can be played to the A1. Uh, in here, I like to uh, make sure that this is set to almost 90%. And, uh, and keep in mind, if, if this is too low, whenever you go to stream music, uh, the music is not going to be very loud. So I want to make sure that that's always set to about, like I said, about 90%. Um, and then from there, I can actually, um, there's a left, right, equal option right here. And from there, I can turn that on, and now both my left and right channels are equal. Um, there's also a default volume setting. There's priority settings. Um, there's a sub-crossover setting as well. As we mentioned earlier, there's a dedicated subwoofer output on the A1, and that's where you can control that. Um, a little bit lower here, you can see um, some basic EQ settings. Uh, if you, want, if you want to adjust the treble, mid, or bass, you can do that right from here. Or if you want to do, uh, if you want to get more technical with it, you can click on, you can click on advanced settings. And uh, from there, you have a full seven band equalizer that you can adjust uh, to your liking. So um, those are the, some of the key setup features. Uh, another thing that we want to point out in the Vessel app, if you go to the home screen here, um, in the top right corner, you have the option to do a page. So I see a microphone icon in the top right corner. Uh, if I click on that, it'll show me all the zones that are uh, available to page to. So I can either do uh, an all, all page to all zones, or I can select a single zone and page to that. So if I just select a single zone here, and I hold that down, um, you'll see that it will start recording my voice. So I can record my message that I want to send, and the moment that I release that, uh, the message will automatically be sent out to that zone that you select. But that's it for the Vessel app. Now that we've already gone through and explained a little bit about each product um, and how to set them up, let's talk next about how to actually use the products once everything's ready to go. Uh, the first thing we'll talk about is uh, Google Cast. 
And again, Google Cast is, is um, owned by Google. It's their technology that we've used inside of our amplifiers. And this technology allows you to stream um, directly from any music app using uh, Google Cast, which is embedded inside the, uh, the native app itself. So uh, for example, and, and this is really nice because it gives you a lot of flexibility and a lot of different ways um, that you can use, uh, that you can stream using Google Cast from your mobile device to a Vessel unit. So I can pick any, any music app that's on my phone that supports Google Cast. And from our experience, most music apps uh, support both AirPlay, AirPlay 2, and Google Cast. And so I'm, uh, for the sake of this one, I'm just going, going to select an app that has Google Cast and show you how to use that. So if I go into Pandora, for example, um, this is one app that I use a lot. And um, you'll notice in, on, in Pandora, in the bottom right, you have a, uh, an AirPlay icon, and you also have a Google Cast icon. So whether you're on iOS or Android, um, it doesn't matter. You can select Google Cast um, from any device. And when I do that, I'll select Google Cast now. Um, I can pull up all of my zones that show up uh, that I've already set up on a vessel system. So if I had a six zone vessel system, I'd see six zones right here inside of Google Cast. Um, if I had three zones, three zones would show up. However many zones I set up with the Google system, that's what's going to show up in my Google Cast app. So I can easily select a, a zone, and immediately I'm playing music. Uh, we also have AirPlay 2, which is built in. Um, and again, these are native integrations that are built into the amplifier, so there's not a third-party app. There's no um, you know, real learning curve that you have to, that you have to go through. Um, these, these services are built into the app. So uh, the next one I'm going to hit on is AirPlay 2. And AirPlay 2 is owned by Apple, as you know. And uh, <clears throat> that gives you the ability to, again, stream natively from a music app uh, using your mobile device to any zone uh, or multiple zones throughout your system. So um, <clears throat> I'm going, for the sake of this uh, demonstration, I'm going to go to Pandora again. And in Pandora, again, I have the option to play either AirPlay or Chromecast. So I'm going to select AirPlay. And one thing we want to stress is that we actually have AirPlay 2 built into these products not just AirPlay. There's a big difference between the two. Um, AirPlay 2 is a feature that we've worked really hard to uh, implement into our products and this gives you a lot of flexibility <clears throat> and just makes the, the experience that much better. So um, if I go into Pandora and I select AirPlay, um, from there I'll have my AirPlay zones that are listed. And again, this is right inside of uh, Pandora. I don't have to jump to another app. This is already inside of Pandora. And so I pull up my uh, AirPlay zones and in there, I'm able to select, you know, kitchen, or uh, I can select master bedroom, or I can select both of them at the same time to create a party zone. So AirPlay 2 enables you to um, group party zones together uh, among different devices. So if I had, you know, two A6s, I could easily stream or group zones together on both A6s. If I had multiple A1s, um, I can stream from multiple A1s. It doesn't matter what it is. It's very flexible and very easy to do to create, uh, to create zones or groups on the fly. And then the, the last one that we have is Spotify Connect. Uh, this technology is from Spotify themselves. And again, this is a native integration. And so, uh, you know, Vessel, as we mentioned before, is certified with Spotify uh, to be able to use their technology inside of our amplifiers. Um, so if I go to the Spotify Music app, we'll open that up. Um, I can select a song that I want to play on my mobile device. And from there, um, I, again, I can, pull up, uh, I can pull up either AirPlay, uh, Spotify Connect, or Google Cast right from Spotify. But for this one, we're going to pull up Spotify Connect. We're going to use Spotify Connect for this. And um, so I pull up my uh, Spotify Connect playlist. And in there, I see all the zones that are connected to Spotify. And again, that's going to reflect however many zones you have set up with your Vessel system. If I had 20 zones set up, it showed 20 zones right inside of Spotify Connect. Um, in this case, I have two zones set up. I have two A1s. And so I'm going to select um, Spotify Connect and play to the master bedroom, or I can play to the, to the kitchen. So very easy to do. You can, you can switch between different zones. Um, again, it doesn't matter you know, how many zones you have or, or how many devices. I can easily select one, one room, play to that room. If I want to switch to another room, I can do that. Um, the other thing that's really beneficial to native streaming is 
um, <clears throat> the ability for um, anybody in the household to be able to stream their music from their own device all at the same time. So if I had an A6, uh, six people can stream from their own device simultaneously um, from different music apps. So there's no limitations as far as what music apps you can and can't use. Um, it's very, very flexible, very simple to use. And again, um, using Google Cast, Spotify Connect, and AirPlay 2, um, we're able to stream from any music app from any mobile device to uh, any, any zones or zones in your house. Thanks for joining us on this Vessel technical training video. We hope it was very helpful for you. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can contact us via our website at Vessel.com or you can email us at support at Vessel.com.